Hello, my name is Beth Dixon and this is part two in a video series based on Vicki Borlaug's PowerPoint presentation on the distribution of individuals versus the distribution of the sample mean. And basically our goal for this uh, set of videos is to identify when to use the distribution of the individual versus the sampling distribution of the sample mean for the normally distributed data. And we're looking at the distribution of individuals where we're looking at a single data point score person uh, and looking at an individual versus when we look at a sample and we look at the sample mean of that sample. And so that's the sampling distribution of the sample means or X bar. And when we look at that, remember that the mean is still the mean, but the standard deviation is adjusted by taking the population standard deviation sigma and dividing by the square root of n. Once we've done that and determined which of these we're looking at and determining what our mean and standard deviation are, then we can work the problem as before when we first introduced the normally distributed data and finding probabilities. And that's what we're doing in part two of this video is we're looking at how to complete the full problem. In part one, we really looked on how to determine whether it was an individual versus whether it's a sample mean. Now we're going to look on how to work the problem once we've determined that. So let's go back and we're going to look at part C of example one. And let's refresh ourselves um, on what example one was. And that is, Jason has a mowing service. The time it takes him to mow the supply company's property is normally distributed with a mean of 86.7 minutes and a standard deviation of 5.2 minutes. If one of the times Jason mows the supply company's property is randomly selected, find the probability that the mean time is greater than 85 minutes. Notice in this case we had determined that this one is a problem that we're doing for the individual because it selects one time and we're looking at the probability that that the time is greater than 85 minutes. So let's begin the problem. It is normally distributed so that we can draw our, our normal curve. And we're looking for a time and the probability, well, excuse me, we're going to put in the mean first and the mean is 86.7. And we're going to put a standard deviation of 5.2, and I like to write that above our problem, um, above our graph, so that we can see that. And we want to know that the probability that the time is greater than 85 minutes, 85 would be below 86.7, and greater than would shade to the right. And we need to find the Z value for that mark and X is 85 and since we're dealing with an individual number because it says if one of these times Jason mows it will be Z equals X minus the mean over the standard deviation which will give us X is 85 the mean or mu is 86 0.7 divided by the standard deviation which is 5.2. Calculate that and we get negative 0.33. We'll mark that on our Z score, our Z number line, and we're now ready to look that value up in the table. Remember that the table we use finds the area to the left. So when we look up negative 0 0.3 and then 0 0.03, that will give us the area to the left of negative 0 0.33, which is 
07 and I'll indicate that on my graph that that's the area to the left. Our answer then needs to be the area to the right so we will subtract 1 minus 0 0.3707 and that gives us the area to the right or our answer as 0 0.6293. Now let's look at example number two and our solution to part C. Jason has a mowing service. The time it takes him to mow the supply company's property is normally distributed with a mean of 86.7 minutes and a standard deviation of 5.2. If six of the times Jason mows the supply company's property are randomly selected, find the probability that the mean time is greater than 85 minutes. So once again, it's normally distributed and it's a mean of 86 and a standard deviation of, oh there we go. And since we're dealing with six of the times, we're dealing with x bar. Now, Ms. Borlaug has drawn the standard deviation and, and the normal curve much narrower because it, we're dealing with a group of six and we're looking at the mean times of all samples of six times. Okay, um, but we don't care if the scale that you draw it is different. What we do want is 86.7 as the mean placed in the center and the standard deviation needs to be adjusted because it's normally distributed with a mean of 86 and a standard deviation of 5.2 but because we are looking at a group of six the standard deviation needs to be changed to 5.2 divided by the square root of 6 because we're looking at not the distribution of individuals but the sampling distribution of the means of the sample mean. So that gives us 5.2 divided by the square root of 6 which gives us a standard deviation of the sample means of 2.1229. Again, watch the rounding here for uh, teach, some teachers, you'll need to take it out some additional places. Now, our goal is to find the probability that that mean time is greater than 85, so we still have a mark of 85 and shaded to the right of that and we still need to find the z value that corresponds to the x bar value in this case of 85. And so our x bar is 85, but this time since we're dealing with the sampling distribution, our formula is slightly different. But notice it's really the same principle. It's still the x minus the mean over the standard deviation. We're just talking about the mean and standard deviation of the sampling distribution. So this is going to be 85 minus 86.7 divided by 2.1229. Same principle, the only difference is we've adjusted the standard deviation because we're dealing with the group. When we do that, our z-score turns out to be negative 0.80. And just as in other problems, that is our z-score, we take our z-score and look it up into our table, which is the area to the left. Remember, we use a table that gives us the area to the left. Since that is the area to the left, that is not the answer we're looking for because we shade it to the right greater than shades to the right and also means we need to take 1 minus the table. So we're going to, we're going to subtract 1 minus 0 0.2119 and that will give us 0 0.7881. Now there are some exercises for you to try. They're the same exercises that you had in part 1 but now you're ready to do the C part, which is to find the requested probabilities.
I appreciate you watching and I hope that this video was helpful in learning how to apply the central limit theorem and the sampling distribution. Again, thank you for watching.